Please. Woo woo woo. Start the, start the woo. sirens up. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> we need. I need like. What I should get on my bookshelf back here is I should get like an actual like red emergency light. You know, you know, like yes, the ones like should. undercover cops. I should too. They like they slap. People yeah. Should. Oh my gosh. Yes. That would be amazing. Have them going at the same time. That's yes. happening. Yes. I. Everything else that we've been planning internally gets pushed to the side and that <laughs> goes to the front because that needs to happen. Um all of you you're, guys that are tuning you're a little, in, you're 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 a little you're slow letting. motion, right? Your your audio is live. Am I? Your video is a little slow. I don't know why that oh, is. Oh God. Okay. Let's see. Any better? Still? Yeah, your your video is lagging behind your audio right now. I don't know why that is. Okay, let me fix this real fast. Before we, we start, it. guys, before we get into all of the juicy details we have for you today. There's a lot we want to cover. A lot of really great stuff. There is. Super positive there stuff, is, too. There is. We left you guys on a bit of a cliffhanger last time. If if you remember correctly, if you were streaming, you were watching that live stream, or maybe you were on Team Replay, you may have noticed we left you on a bit of a cliffhanger in regards to the CMS final rule update we broke it live. We were the first Medicare agents to stream about the final rule because it literally dropped while we were streaming. We were trying to give you guys a little taste of what we were reading in real time. It was very difficult. Thousand page document. We're trying to synthesize it. We're trying to use AI technology <laughs> to, to get to the bottom of the final rule. If you guys were on that live stream, it's been a full, a full week. I think it's been a full week. Oh, I think your is your video caught up now. How, Let's see. How am I doing? How am I doing? How am I doing? Any better? It's better. It's better, but I think there's a slight lag still. But it is better. Oh. Um, okay. What about what about Christian, my audio? Is my audio? Audio's great. It's just not synced up. I feel like I'm watching an older Kung Fu movie with Christian speaking audio video lag. It does look like that. It's like, it's like you're dubbed over. It's like, it's like, yeah. I don't know who posted see. that, but that, that may have just made my whole day because I used to watch those old Kung the, Fu movies. I love those. The, that was the great Frederick Roth. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Roth. I appreciate your comment. It may have made my whole week, to be honest. Let's see. Is it still lagging? Yeah, there's still a bit of a separation between your talking yeah, and, this is and frustrating. Do you there's so much? So, we guys, need to get Christian, into. the at the office in Sandy, Utah, Christian has about twelve hamsters. That as long as the hamsters stay fed. And they're happy. These happy little <laughs> hamsters. They spin. On, they spin this giant wheel that cranks the internet, the the router in the office. So sometimes it just doesn't work very well. But how about now? Still, yeah. Still no, the same. Still the same. It looks, kind of... it looks good to one person. It looks good to one person. <laughs> it looks good to me. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's. It's very. Uh, I'm glad at least one person could see me properly. Do you do you want to try doing like a full reset before we kick off here, or do you? What do you want to do? We we could. I mean, how disruptive is it? I can't see what you're seeing. So how 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 complicated does it make things? Um, again, I think that the comment from from Mr. Roth, I think, was spot on. It's it feels like I'm. In, <laughs> In a kung fu movie, and you're dubbed over. Maybe, maybe for like should legal I try to reasons. Leave? Maybe for legal reasons, we should just start dubbing you over. Like it's like Dragon Ball Z <laughs> style. Just dub it right over. Why don't you <laughs> try try leaving and coming back in, and see if I can hold the stream. Okay. Guys, we're gonna fix this. Apologies for the technical difficulties. We're gonna try to get to the bottom of this and get rolling. 
rumor has it there's more internet <laughs> in the California way. Yeah, you know, I, I don't disagree with that. I think California has the internet, you guys. So again, today's live stream, we're, we're going to be talking about CMS final rule update part two. Okay, Christian's back. Let's see. Let's see if the questions are. One, two, three. I think it's. I think it's yeah. One, two, three. Oh my One, gosh. Two, three. Oh my gosh, guys, the hamsters apparently are working their butts off and working overtime. The overtime. Legal, <laughs> state legal overtime. And we've got internet now. This is fantastic. That's better. See, good, we already got good, the good. comic. That's better. I held the stream down. That was a long 30 seconds while you were gone, <laughs> but I held it, I held it down. We're good. Thank you for your patience, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Um my first thoughts getting into this is you guys must be glutton for punishment. Here we are back again talking about this. Um, Glenn, where do we even start with something like this? Because there's there's a lot we need got to dig into. Where do we start? Um, man, there's a lot. Can I just mention something completely irrelevant for a second? Is that okay? Can I? I'm going to go completely off the rails here. Yes, it's your show. It's your show. It is well. my show. I own half this show. It's 50 I own half this your show. show. <laughs> this is half my show. There's two. You see, there's two of us here, guys. I am obsessed with this book. I've never been a huge Patrick Bet David fan. Mm. Um, to be honest, I would. You know, I was always kind of like, I would because my so my perspective on Patrick Bet David, and the reason I'm talking about this book, guys, is we're doing a book club. Yes. If you're not aware, this is the book of the month. We have a scheduled group call. Everybody's invited to read this book and get on our, our monthly book club book call. I'm so excited that we're doing this again. I'm excited about this book. I'm only a chapter into it. I also downloaded the audio book too, which is read by Patrick Bet David, which is awesome. I don't know. Did you know that? I didn't know that. So my plan oh, was... Bro. It's my plan so was good. I was going to finish it's the so book. Good. I was going to finish reading the actual book, and then I was going to go through and listen to the audiobook. That's always how I like to do it because I feel like I'm getting that much more out of it. So I'm super excited to hear that. So my perspective on Patrick Bet David, PHP was like an MLM style insurance agency. So I kind of always came at it from that perspective. But hearing like some of his inner thoughts already on how he structured his agency and why he structured it the way he did. I think the man's a genius. I also am obsessed with this book and I think it's applicable to everybody who's running a business. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're running any type of business, I think this book is applicable. I think the principles are super valuable. So just wanted to plug the book club really fast. I love it. Uh, I love it. Thank you for that. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm about four chapters in, I want to say. And slowed down a little bit because of me moving of course and you know everything that comes with that right. but um i'm so enjoying the book i think there's so many good things about it I, I saw a couple of people that were like i read the book there's nothing good in it i'm like really i'm what? like what, what book did i were we reading the same book because i've read yeah, a what, lot what? of books as yeah. have you right like both yeah. of us have read a lot a of business of books, books. And there's a lot of business that's books not, out there. That's not all stage. Christians is that's stage props. Behind <laughs> Christian, those aren't even real. That's probably he probably has like cardboard. He like taped pictures of the books. It's that's these are real books back here. Those are real. Yes. You ever see uh, the interview where there's the fake grocery store and it's like yeah, yes, it's a the, fake grapefruit. <laughs> is that North? Are you talking about the North Korea one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the North, North Korea. Korea. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time, by the way, guys. We just, I got, demonet like we just got demonetized on YouTube because I mentioned <laughs> North Korea. But um, <laughs> what book? Uh, the name of the book is Your Next Five Moves Master the Art of Business Strategy by Patrick Bet David. Yes. Um, if you don't know who Patrick Bet David is, crawl out from under the rock you're, you've been hiding under for the past 10 years because he's one of the most Huge. prolific agency owners that potentially ever played the game. I mean, I'm super excited. I it's it, This isn't a fluff book. I guess if no. someone was, if you wanted fluff and you picked this up, you would be disappointed, right? If, <laughs> yeah. If you wanted the, like a raw, raw, like, 
oh, like, you know, like, like 10, like to me, 10 X was a raw, raw book. Oh, I honestly, I'm you sorry. I, I, right I, know, I just saw I saw your face. You just, uh, you, just, you, just, you just, not that murdered. it was a bad, you I'm not murdered. saying it was a bad book. I'm not, I never said it was a bad, it's just more of a raw, raw, like it yeah. hypes you up. You yeah. get hyped up in 10 X. Like, okay. You feel let's like go. you're going to run through a wall. We have to read that hundred percent. Yes. It was a good book. I'd still recommend 10X by Grant Cardone, but it felt more rah-rah. I get more attracted, though, to books that have principles attached to them where I feel like I can take it and go execute with it. Sometimes I want a rah-rah book, too, though. So, mm-hmm. all right. That being yeah. said, let's get back. We're five minutes <laughs> past talking about book club guys check out book club it's in the seven figure medicare agent group if you're not already subscribed to the event that's coming up do it it's 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 listed under events it's free for everyone to attend and we're going to be getting on and just essentially going through and talking about what we got out of the book what we like the most out of it things that really kind of jumped out to us in different ways so I'm, i'm super excited about it we did this as a group a couple of years back we got through one whole book and did it once and then it didn't continue. So it's long overdue to bring it back. So I'm super excited. Um, and so I'm enjoying as long as we get, as long as we get to two books, it was a huge success. If we, we do it twice, if we, we do double this the month, books we did last we double, time, we'll be bragging about this for years. We doubled it. We did double this year. <laughs> okay. That being said, let's get back to CMS final rule. And I think you asked me, you said, where should we start with this? Mm-hmm. I vote we start with where we left off on the live stream. It's been a week, right? Almost exactly a week, maybe a day past, maybe eight days, right? Since Because mm-hmm. it, it was the fourth. I remember they dropped it 4-4. So it's been eight days since yeah. just about eight days since final rule broke. When we were live streaming, you guys, and we're trying to pull out these pieces and I'm, we're reading them live. I, it would be crazy to go back and watch myself right now because we're, we're, we're taking verbatim what we're reading. We're taking these, these paragraphs that, again, CMS wrote. It's not, I mean, did we take it out of context? Maybe. Maybe we took a little bit out of context when we were live streaming. But mm-hmm. the reality is there's they're literally in the written rule. It's saying, overrides are gone i mean that is verbatim what they wrote down and so you know our reaction live that you guys witnessed there was some emotion behind that and i don't feel like we were completely off the rails but the there is good news behind what we had originally read on our last public live stream christian why don't you take over from there because you've You've had probably even more conversations than I have over the past week. Christian's been talking to everybody, you guys. I mean, mm-hmm. he's he's sending me screenshots. He's he's sending me all sorts of stuff where I'm just like, okay, you're right. I, I had to like back down. I was like, Christian, yes, I agree. You're right. This is <laughs> this is what it means. So why don't you take over from here and tell us what you've learned since then about override specific? Let's start with that. Yes. So I want to start off also by just piggybacking a little bit on what Glenn said. You know, we literally did something no one else did and tried to break this thing down for you guys when it dropped while we were live. In case you didn't see that stream, I believe most of you probably did. Um, Ton of attention that that stream ended up getting. But it the the intention of it originally was to give our thoughts, our pre-thoughts of what we think it might look like because we were under the impression it was going to drop the next day, dropped while we were live. It's essentially like a radio host having like 9-11 happen while they're live and they're trying to like <laughs> say what's happening. You know what I mean? Like th- there was like a famous That's an like, analogy. Howard, it's like a famous That's an Howard. analogy if I've ever heard one. <laughs> That's the analogy you <laughs> <laughs> It's a disaster that breaks it is. while you're the government live. Level you're, disaster. Trying to, you're trying yeah. to tell communicate to the audience of what's going on in real time it's just it's a disaster and um so that's ultimately what ended up happening so to answer to answer uh, glenn's question was what 
have we learned since what we did that learned? stream, right? So some of you guys might have already seen me do some lives, you know, um, solo in the group the last couple of days. Um, just kind of talking about things that I've learned. Essentially, what I would say, that was a rough apology. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a rough analogy. Yeah, yeah it was kind of rough. That quote. I want. I'll have that <laughs> clipped. We'll run Facebook ads with that clip. Don't <laughs> worry, you guys. That's coming. Stay tuned. What have um, we learned, though? So what That's... we've learned is, it's true that in the final rule, there's verbiage that specifically states that overrides are going to be essentially completely eradicated from you know from compensation also page 591 592 are very Ooh. clear in Christian their verbiage receipts. <laughs> he has receipts for you guys today i love this my whole life has been final rule this past week guys. <laughs> <laughs> christian's <laughs> like oh is this what you want to talk about yeah, i know receipts everything time, baby um, here you go here you go those spots in the document are very clear that FMOs are not subject to the rule. Now, what does that mean, right? Because there's a lot of people that are GAs, MGAs, SGAs, et cetera, that earn overrides that oversee agent teams that are not FMOs. Well, all of the conversations I've had with people in the know, people that work for carriers, people um, with massive FMOs, people connected to AmeriLife, people connected to Integrity, um, have all kind of had the same opinion on how it's being interpreted. And that is that CMS does not really, the CMS's definition of an FMO is very different from what all of our definitions of an FMO is. They don't have a great understanding of our space. This is not news to probably a majority of you, but in their mind, FMOs is defined as anybody that has an agent force underneath them. This goes all the way from the person that has two, three, four, or five agents they oversee that's a GA, all the way up to the 25,000 agent monster IMO, right? Top of hierarchy. So all of that is being lumped together into one pot. And that regulation kind of um, is, is expected to have that type of impact. So in layman's terms, what it means is if you don't have a downline and you know agents contracted under you you probably can't earn overrides of any kind and sometimes what we've seen is fmos let's say there's a massive monster producer right he's a single guy single agent doesn't have anybody that works with him doesn't have any agents underneath him but he is just killing it. he's writing 500 apps a year by himself and an fmo is internally paying him let's say x you know xyz amount of overrides on every app just to you know it's incentivized because he, he just writes so much business himself those kind of things have happened in the industry before. It's going to essentially ban that type of thing to where like you have to have agents under you. And that's the way it's always kind of been, but there's been gray area and loopholes around it. So more or less, there's very little disruption expected to actually take place when it comes to overrides. Um, HRAs are going away. No shock there. That kind of is made up by the extra hundred dollar compensation. There's still a lot of unanswered questions about marketing dollars. There's some thoughts I have about that, but there's a lot of clarity needed. Um, and there's thoughts about what the FMO can provide in terms of softwares and things like that. But I'm a conversation I had that I thought was very telling was this document essentially is 5% the damage that we originally thought it was going to be. And to me, I thought that was super, super telling um, based on the, the 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 worry about this thing and the, and the overall, um, you know, doom and gloom that has been happening the last four or five months about this thing and just the fear based on the proposal that came out in November. Can, so that's where we're at. Can I, let me, really fast, I, there's a comment here I want to read. So no incentive to be a monster producer, just be a babysitter. How would, what would your thoughts to that comment be based well, on I what think, you just said i mean think about it like this right if someone's getting a being a monster producer and they're getting an override let's say override is supposed to be in the carrier's definition for somebody that has agents underneath them that is the carrier's definition as is it's just it's not being policed super well um and so the extra hundred dollars an app probably is what they were making an override anyway so stays here it's level 
The, right? the so, vast majority of compensation to a producer has always been the actual commission coming off that policy, right? Like mm -hmm. anything above and beyond that was always just kind of extra or icing on the top. I mean, I've looked at business plans with some of the most successful agency owners you can think of. And I know exactly how they've written out what their expectations are with compensation. And I've never seen a business plan before where someone was expecting these additional payments to really fund their business, the funding of the business or the funding of, of their salary, however you want to look at it. It was always based off of the actual commissionable dollars that they were producing. So yeah, yeah I would completely reject that comment, to be honest. I, I think there's absolutely still and always will be an incentive to be a monster producer. <laughs> and, yeah. and write a ton of business and and like let's let's go just a, a, a tad deeper into this right what there's still some unclarity on is if you are an individual monster producer and let's say you have some agents underneath you and you get an override there's thoughts from some people i've spoken to and of course this part of it take with a grain of salt because there's still clarity that's needed there's a lot of still unanswered questions but that agent might be able to earn override on agents that are contracted under him, but maybe not in his own business anymore. Right? Right. So overrides might strictly only be for agents that are contracted under you. But the way they're at right now, if you're a monster producer and you have some agents under you and you're getting an override, you're getting override on their business written and yours. Right. And so CMS's intention with this whole thing is to limit additional compensation right? That can skew recommendations to different plans based on compensation structure. So they're trying to make it to where when you personally sell an app, you're going to get the same thing no matter what. And I think they've done that. Um, but I think they've done a pretty good job of taking people that train agents and sport agents and putting them off to a different category. But I think there's a lot of thought that is said that if you're an SGA or an MGA or whatever, you personally write an app, that override you got on your own business probably won't get paid to you anymore on future business, probably just for agents under you. But we'll see. But that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, I think. Um, and, and one thing I want to mention right now to you guys that Christian's already mentioned publicly as well. The next part of this whole scenario that we're all going through together, it's up to the insurance carriers how this is truly all going to be defined. So, it, you know, it could skew a little bit one way or another based on, you know, their interpretations or how they want to maybe apply the rule. But overall, you know, we're, sh we're sharing with you guys what we've heard, what we've been told, what we feel is most likely going to happen, what will most likely be the future based on the CMS final rule that just dropped eight days ago. But I do, I just, you know, take everything we're saying with a grain of salt because no carrier has publicly said a word yet and we probably won't hear anything for weeks, if not months. So, yeah. you know, that's unfortunate that it takes time, but at the same time, you have to understand they are literally trying to synthesize the same thousand page document that we were and they're, they're processing this through a legal team. And then the legal team is basically trying to help their business operations, right, on how they're going to actually operate as an insurance carrier. The, the one thing I, I really want to mention that I feel super strongly about is I believe that if all overrides were completely removed from the Medicare business tomorrow, I think the insurance, specifically the Medicare insurance space, would probably crumble or at least come to a 90% halt because of that overnight change. If all the insurance carriers had to start managing these insurance agent relationships directly, because there's no longer any incentive at all for any hierarchy structure, any any no overrides, right? Because again, you have to understand, Christian and I were talking about this as agency owners. We're talking about this as well, you know, there's a risk you're taking on when you contract an agent. So if you're yeah. not making any type of monetization from contracting an agent. Why would you just be like, oh, well, we'll be friends and you'll see, you can keep writing business under me. Like there has to be a monetization there to cover the risk, to cover any other type of like operations or not to mention like incentives that you're providing as an FMO. So I don't see a world anytime soon where they could just rip the, the plug on overrides without absolutely severely damaging the industry where beneficiaries just wouldn't be helped apps wouldn't get written 
all of these call centers would be overwhelmed. They wouldn't be able to handle the, the type of business influx that would be coming. Maybe in the future that changes for sure. It's, it's possible. But right now, there's no way these insurance carriers could just start managing thousands and thousands. I mean, there's what, 100,000 Medicare agents, right? Probably, I mean, you there, there's probably two hundred thousand or more now. Like it, it just speaks to your point. Yeah, you know that it's just it's not it's not feasible. There's no way, not overnight. That type of no. infrastructure would take a long time to build out. You're talking about hundreds of jobs, thousands of jobs. Not to mention the technology infrastructure that would need to take place. There would be so much infrastructure that would need to be created to manage all of these agents that I just don't believe these carriers have or won't have for a while, even if that's the goal here. So I feel good about that. There's two questions that are in the chat I wanted to quickly comment. And I think one of the last, the second of the two kind of segues beautifully into the next part of this that we want to talk about, I think. This one's yes. easy to answer. Is the extra hundred dollars only for new applications? Yes. I have no, in, I have no reason to believe that you're just going to get a raise on your entire book of business, right? Like if you have a thousand clients, let's say on the books, you're going to get an extra hundred per year on all of them. Just like that. No, I'm not expecting that. Well, I think it's just here, new business going so forward. So my initial, my initial interpretation that it was all new business to the agency, but I heard someone else interpret it as turning 65 only. Is it, do you think it's only T65, like first applications into Medicare or any new business to you as an entity will get yeah. paid that 100? Take, guys, take this next part with a grain of salt because I don't know. But my understanding, at least as of right now, is new apps in general, like new business, probably new business, you know, into the carrier, I would imagine. And it's a hundred dollars first year of the application and then 50 on on the the bat on, on the renewals part of it the second third fourth fifth year i but i i, I don't know 100 percent for sure i'm just telling you what i believe and i understand at least right now but i could be wrong about that so that little detail we'll have to wait and see the the second question and i think this question really transitions great into the next topic of conversation for this it appears the fmos won't be getting override for the items that are inclusive on to on the raise agents are receiving. Do you believe overrides will be more for contracting and recruiting? So one thing that I've kind of taken the approach on with this is there's a lot of un, there's a still a lot of unanswered questions, right? Nobody has all the answers. And anybody that's pretending like they do right now is is probably either one, the very top of the industry, and they probably do know more than everybody else, right? Like, and I'm talking people at the very top of integrity, the very top of AmeriLife, people that run carriers. Like, those are the people that have the most information right now. Anybody else that's talking, they're just talking, and right? Like, and I'm getting information from very credible sources, but I don't have all the answers, right? Um, but is it reasonable to expect that Will there be some kind of change in terms of what the FMO can provide? I've heard, I've actually seen some FMOs come out publicly and state that they're interpreting it, that they can't legally provide you software anymore because it's part of compensation. I don't think that's what the rule says, but there's people that are interpreting it that way. So will there be limitations to what the FMO can provide you in terms of support? It's possible. And, but if it's not today, someday could it be? The answer, bluntly, is yes, it could be, even if it's not now. And agents need now more than ever high, high quality training yes. and resources in order to be able to not be as reliant on their FMO. Now, if you can get support from your FMO, they can help you grow faster and stronger than you ever could probably on your own. But you need to not be so reliant on your FMO for these types of things. Like let's like for a lot of you close your eyes and picture a world. Let's say this thing came out a week ago and it actually was the case where FMO was, were going to be done away with, right? <gasps> there, there, the doors are closing there. There's like, there's there you're inside of buildings. And what are those things that like roll around when, you know, when it's like in the desert, what are they called again? Tumbleweeds. Uh, yes. There's tumbleweeds inside Tumbleweed. of the buildings. <laughs> I don't know how they got there. I don't know what's blowing them. It must be the AC unit. But <laughs> like 
if that did happen, your FMO is gone. No one's calling you back. If no one's calling you back, if you have a question, how would it impact your business? That's how a really you, great point. How would you, how would, would you, would you be and fine? I know, I know firsthand, I know firsthand from being the owner of an FMO to working with FMOs for the past 10 years to being an agent. I know firsthand that you guys are asking questions almost every single day that you're actually writing business where it's like, beep, boop, beep, boop. hello, FMO. What do I do here? Oh no. What about this underwriting question? Oh, well, this application has this, this, and this going on with it. What do I do with this? And what happens if that bat phone goes away? What happens if you have no more hotline to someone who can give you all the answers? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you and do? And also, right, like, will there be certain, you know, the, the FMO is going to be here. I think, you know, that's, that's, that's a conclusion. The the FMO is going to be here. They're still going to be able to work with you and everything like that. But is the overall layer of resources they're able to provide you, do they go down a little bit? It's possible. And how are you guys going to be able to build your business? How dependent are you on your FMO? And Glenn and I have been having some, some pretty um, in-depth conversations about this and just kind of sitting back and watching all the feedback and all of what people are talking about. And one thing we both came to the conclusion on was there's a need for high level, actionable, step by step blueprint training that you're not getting from the FMOs even now. Let's just face it, right? Um, yes. Out there in the marketplace. And I think if more I'm, agents. I'm seeing those comments from you guys. What Christian just said, I am seeing those exact comments. Like, we need access to better training. Like, please help us with access to better training. I'm yep. seeing those comments and, and what's going on right now. It just makes the need 10 X what it already was. Not to mention this risk of everyone becoming an independent agent or being forced into an LOA role. Right. Cause that's, that's the theory, right? The theory is if FMOs go away, you either have to LOA to someone or which means you're assigning their your commissions to somebody else and you're trusting them to pay you which sometimes that's a great option sometimes it's not depends on you and your setup or you go independent and you have no fmo no one helping you and you have to try to go direct to these these carriers so yeah. what do you do how do you fill in this gap how do you help more agents with these questions and a lot of them someone just said in the comments you know, some of these questions make me cringe because they're they're saying because it's really basic questions, right? So what what's a what's not a better way to help than have a resource where where people can go back and check and find these answers themselves? Mm -hmm. Yep. And we actually have created and developed over the years a platform that gives you just that. It's a platform that basically us as an FMO give to our contracted agents and it's essentially their A to Z uh, playbook in of how we've built CBIS, ESI internally, right? How we've built the internal agency, how we built the book of business, how we've grown to a seven figure operation. Um, it's A to Z. It's marketing. It's sales training, which many agents desperately need. Um, we talk about this often, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's branding, it's automations, it's online presence, it's everything you need to know. And that's what we use to train our own agents. So, but we've also created this format to where agents can, if they're not contracted with us, they can, they can buy it and essentially get the same kind of training that our internal agents get. And it's a beautiful model to where we can help everybody. Right. Um, be, to combat this, we're making a change, guys. We're making a change from the standpoint that of everything we're going to be including into this platform and all the additional work it's going to take. Um, it's already a monster platform, but all the additional work it's going to take. We're changing my online training platform, which is Seven Figure Medicare University, to a month to month subscription based model starting May 1st. Okay. So April's the last month 
that you'll be able to get it for lifetime access. Now, I put up a post yesterday in the group to kind of gauge interest. There's a ton of interest about us offering this for upwards of 80% off. And we're doing that for the month of April. It's also the last time you'll ever be able to get it lifetime access for the university. Um, it's going from $5,000 one time. So that's what it is available at yesterday. Today, it's available for a one-time offer of $695.95. So $695.95, okay? Um, I'm actually going to be dropping that link in the chat, or someone's going to be dropping that link in the chat on the different Randy's. streams. Okay, okay Randy's, Randy's yeah, I just I just sent a message. Okay, perfect. But but yeah, guys, I mean, we're gonna we're we're offering that till the end of the month. After that, this is only going to be available as a month to month option. It'll never be available again as a one and done thing. Like the people that bought this, think about this, right? The people that bought this years ago, Glenn, you were around when it first came out. Yes. This thing came out originally at 40, 40 to 50 videos, somewhere in there. It's now 160, 70 videos, somewhere in there. And it's been updated significantly over the course of time. When think, we first started offering I think it, it was 156 it. Vid, the exact video yeah. count. So the link just got dropped in the comments, you guys. It's sevenfigureu.com. So there's yeah. some more information on there. You can actually sign up right now if you go to that website and you can get an access to the entire university. So Christian has 156 videos that he's he's updated, he's curated, he's been adding to. Not not only does he have 156 videos in the university library for you guys to have access to, he's also doing weekly live trainings with you guys. So you can Every have access week. You can yep. have access to Christian through these live trainings. You can ask questions. You get up-to-date information on things like what we're talking about today. You know, compliance, how to run your business, marketing, you know, carrier training, all sorts of unbelievably in-depth information. The type of stuff that as an independent agent originally myself, I only dreamed of and it didn't exist. My training, you guys, and I've talked about this many times, my training as an independent agent, which I was technically an LOA agent. Um, I, I wasn't like I was getting paid from the, the carrier, but I was captive to the brokerage I was at. So it, it was it was LOA. And my training was about two days of shadowing and one one agent that was successful. That was it. I shadowed him. I watched him on the phone, set appointments. I watched him in the house. That was my training. You guys, I didn't have access to this in-depth video library where you can just watch a video 10 times or skip to the exact video that you're looking for because you're looking for a script regarding Medicare supplement or you're looking for how to quote someone regarding you know XYZ, whatever, whatever issue you're dealing with. There is so much highly specific information that you can take advantage of in the yep. seven-figure university. And on top of Christian's 156 videos, I created a 50 video series, a 50 different video series based on the first 10 chapters of, of my book, How to Qualify, Present, and Sell Final Expense and Medicare Supplements to Seniors. I was selling this for $1,000, uh, the, the course, to have access to those 50 videos. And we decided to just go ahead and include all of it. All of it is going to be in the seven figure university for you guys to have access to. So that's over 200 videos, over 200 videos. And with the discount that we have going on at $695.95, which I fought Christian over and over. I said, this we did. is too cheap. We did. This is too, I, I, I died. I really did. I was like, this is not, as, as I get, it's, it's, we're, we're not making any money by offering <laughs> it at this price point. Not to mention the value is unbelievable to over yeah. 200 videos. So you're, you're talking about a $3 per video investment. I mean, <laughs> it, you're, it, this price point will never exist ever again. I'll tell you right now, this is yeah. a, truly a one-time opportunity to get lifetime access. You get the weekly trainings, the webinars that Christian and I, or just Christian will be hosting. 
Glenn Definitely will never let me do it. this again. Guys. Yeah, I just want you to understand. Never. This, like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be super clear. I, I, I was, I was out of my mind. I really was. I was like six ninety five. I'm like, you're sure about this? I'm like, we can't do a thousand. I'm like, we can't do a thousand <laughs> for lifetime access to over two hundred videos plus weekly live trainings. Um, no, it's six ninety five ninety five. That's the price point. Sevenfigureu.com. You can sign up right now. And starting May 1st, because we are going to start investing a lot more of our time, money, and energy and resources into the university, adding videos beyond the weekly trainings, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. It's going to be mm -hmm. awesome. But it will be a subscription model starting May 1st. And we'll yes. get into the details of that later. We're not going to talk about the subscription right now, because right now we want to let you guys have one more chance, one last chance to get access to over 200 videos between Christian and myself covering final expense, covering Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage, marketing, hiring a virtual assistant, staffing, scaling, carrier specific training, quoting tools, CRMs. I mean, it's literally an A to Z guide, whether you're a brand new agent or you've been in the business for five or 10 years, there is something in here where I guarantee you will make a profit beyond the 695 that you would spend to access these videos. You might figure out Facebook ads finally. Christian has a whole set on Facebook ads in there. That's really good. You might finally figure out Facebook ads because you signed up for this university today. You might get a weekly live training of a few months from now where it fixes a problem that you were having and allows you to scale and get to the next level in your business. So. I couldn't be more excited about it, you guys. And I'm, I'm super happy to contribute and have my 50 video series course included in the seven figure university. And you'll see the countdown timer on the landing page. So you yep. know, this is limited time, limited time that we're going to be offering this unless Christian wants to give me an aneurysm, <laughs> then maybe it extends, but I don't, I don't foresee allowing that to don't happen. Don't see it happening. Don't see yeah, it happening. I don't see that um, happening. We, I want to, I want us to continue to to like each other, right? Us doing business yeah. together. So, I do too. I'm, I want, I'm, that, I'm, I want that. Too. I don't want to push <laughs> that anymore. Um, yes. So, I wanted to just kind of mention something and kind of expand on what Glenn was saying. And somebody mentioned, go into more detail on what on on the specifics. I'll go into even a little bit more detail in addition to what I already said and Glenn said and what you get with this. But. Um, do you want to log in and screen share and just show them everything that's in there? And just total I transparency can. right here on the live yeah, stream, you guys. You guys can literally see all the different videos that you'll have access to within so, the university. I want to mention this super quickly, right? So I was talking a little bit before about when this thing first came out, it was probably two or three hundred dollars. I don't remember purchase price. People got in four years ago basically at two, three hundred dollars got lifetime access and they've gotten to be on my training calls for four years. They've gotten to see all the updated content that we've put in there. That's way above and beyond what they probably purchased <laughs> mm -hmm. at that point in time for the past four years. The lifetime access deal is so good. That's why we can't do it anymore. It just doesn't make sense for us time wise. Um, but it's so good because it's the gift that keeps on freaking given because this thing's going to continue to grow and expand and evolve over time. Um, so I wanted to mention that I'm trying to get it to load guys I've had some trouble. Those hamster, we got to get the hamsters, uh, the hamsters going, <laughs> the hamsters. Do you want to try it on yours and see if we have any better luck? Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up. While, while Glenn's working on that, I want to go into a little bit st of stuff guys. So to just reiterate what Glenn said, you also get his course, which I personally went through before we merged and is great quality, fantastic X's and O's on Medicare, selling Medicare, Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage, um, final expense. So it's a lot more training on the life side than you get from my program, which I think is great. It kind of balances itself out. But yeah, I mean, like Glenn said, you know, there's all the way from Medicare basic trainings to, you know, what trainings a new agent needs, Medicare 101s, but it also gets higher and higher level the farther you go into the, the program. So there's a seminar section that tells you exactly how we do seminars. It tells you, it gives you my PowerPoint of what I use. It, it tells you the vendors we use. It tells you exactly how to find 
a location, tells you what you're going to spend. And it also has a recording from start to finish of me giving a presentation in front of a room full of seniors, probably about 25, 30 seniors. Um, there's a Facebook ads training. There I mean, that, is, al that alone, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's people just that charge the, thousands for just know, Facebook ads training. The, it's so great. The value is insane. And like, you know, some people might think, you know, I'm, I'm just being a salesman here on the live right now and that's fine, but I know value when I see it. And when I, and I also know what it's like to be a brand new agent and you're not getting any information. Again, that's how I was brought into the industry. So to see this type of information that's being shared with you guys at the price point, and there's no, like, you don't have to contract with Christian you right. know, you don't, there's, there's no further obligations here. You, there's not a single penny that you have to pay beyond the one-time access. So when I see that, the, the value is just insane. It, it really is. I'm getting logged in right now so I can show you guys. I was able to get it. I don't know if I'm farther along than you. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I want to, I want to kind of, you know, say one more thing. People are going to ask, why are we doing this? We're doing this because in a time of uncertainty, we want to be able to bring value to you guys and provide you answers to complicated solutions. And I think the most complicated solution to government um, interference, government regulation, is being able to build a business that you have all the control over, that you determine what's going to happen and you have way more control. Ultimately, we never have 100% of control, right, when it comes to government. But like, you have so much more control if you are the one calling the shots in your business. Um, and you have the tools and the skills to not rely on anything except for you and an amazing business that you built over time. You know, you want to build a business and that includes having a brand that lives for years to come. And then, and then, and that really creates a machine to where clients just come in the door nonstop and you really don't know what to do with it. Like I made a joke a couple of years ago about our business. I was like, I was like, I can't kill this thing. If I wanted to, <laughs> I, I can say crazy things on lives, like make nine 11 references and we still keep chugging. It doesn't seem to matter. Um, you gotta stop. You're killing me. You're killing me. Guys, uh, before Christian completely demonetizes everything we're trying to accomplish here, I hope you can see my screen. So this is initially what you see after you log into the seven figure you, uh, which is again, seven figure Medicare university. And you'll see the first thing you're seeing here is there's there's actually two courses now. And, and again, the plan is we're going to be adding more and more courses to this university to really expand it. Again, beyond those weekly live trainings that you're going to get access to every week, we're also going to add a lot more content to the university. So this is the How to Qualify, Present, and Sell Final Expense and Medicare Supplements to Seniors. This is my 50 video course, 51, um, and going through... Again, very much so in that it's it's more in depth than what you're actually seeing in the book. And I'm talking to you about it and also providing some more up to date information on some of these sections, because this was filmed about three years after I published the actual book. So this is probably even more up to date information than what you're seeing on the book. The book itself, you guys, if you want a copy, it's you can get a copy for only eight dollars right now on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon.com, type in how to qualify, present and sell. You can actually get a 300 page A to Z guide, how to qualify, present and sell final expense and Medicare supplements to seniors. This is the video series that will be integrated into seven figure university. And again, tons of video content. I want to say it was over um, 50 hours too. I, I think it was somewhere around there. So over 200 hours and over 200 videos of, of I mean, how, how many hours would you say your, your section is? I, it's, it's really hard to say. It might be well over 125 hours or something like that yeah. in, in, in its, in its so totality. It's probably close to 200 hours of content. I mean, it's just, just insane. Um, yeah. So, so this one is my training. So these are the sections guys. We were broken down into sections. So as I mentioned, it starts as what would you do as a new agent? I, I really believe there is um, there's something for everybody in here. So there's this new agent section kind of walks you through the basics, right? Things that you need to know. If we just started off with Facebook ads, most of you would be like, huh, you know, I just got my license. So <laughs> there is a spot in there for a lot of beginners, but there's also stuff about the FCC rule, 
um, yep. self lead generation. Look at this. This is brand new content, you guys. Like yeah. up to date, super relevant content. You know, from again, this is from the the weekly training, and Christian's breaking it down. And this is super important to know, right? Like you need to know this. <laughs> you need to know this to operate your business. So again, we're talking about what happens if your FMO goes away. You know, yeah. what happens? You're getting FMO level training content that's being updated. Not only do you have this huge archive of knowledge that you get access to, but it's also being updated weekly by someone who's an expert in the field, which I think is just an incredibly valuable thing to have with everything that's going on right now with final role. You know, we spent the first 30 minutes of this talking about the stuff that we've already figured out with the final rule update, which I would say most people still haven't heard anything. Right. right. And Christian and I have already figured out a lot around what's most likely going to happen with the final rule. And that's the type of information you're getting access to. You're getting access to things quicker before most people and most likely more in depth too. Because again, we're, we've been doing this for over 10 years apiece. We have huge networks in the industry where we can figure things out potentially before most people. And we're trying to synthesize that and share it with you guys as quickly as we can. So, I mean, the, just incredible. Stuff, on the growth stuff too, I wanted to mention, um, hang on, hang on. I want to, I want to touch on some of the stuff. Let's just, just let me, it quick, just let me keeps going. It just um, keeps going. With some of the stuff too, the training, a lot of training you get from a lot of FMOs is training the stuff that they did when they were selling in like the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. We're sharing stuff that we're internally doing in the yes. agency. So we have we, we, we run an agency internally. That agency does very well. It's a very influential agency, very productive agency. And so we're sharing what we're doing today, not what we did 15 years ago. I think that's another important component to this. Um, Okay. Now where were we? Okay. So there's training on the quoting softwares. I, did we miss anything? We miss anything like CRMs. Yeah. The C CRM CRMs. section, there's quoting, there's a quoting and enrollment software section. There's lead sources, right? So the, every little thing that's going to work in terms of direct mail, direct mail is way different today. Telemarketing leads, how to actually be successful with telemarketing leads. There's lead hero section, of course. Um, seminars I was mentioned this a second ago, right? How to make 250K in one to two years webinar with seminars. Um, and there's actual my seminar presentations. And there's attachments in there. With... I mean, that that video alone is worth seven. Yeah, hours. it is. It probably is. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> that right. video is. This that was... video, this one video alone is worth 700 bucks. Yeah, easily. that video is crazy. And then yeah. there's the actual presentation of an, a real seminar from start to finish. You can see it. Crazy. How is the presentation done? How is you know, how, how long do we answer questions? What do we move? What do we touch on? What do we actually talk about? Everything. Um, how do we get our permission and contacts? You need those guys. Um, Facebook ad section, as Glenn was mentioning. So there's how many ad videos on Facebook ads? Wow. Almost 10. Yeah. Three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. It's, a, it's insane. Christian and I, guys, really fast, I'm going to share this story. Christian and I were on a private call and we were talking about hobbies. Hobbies came up. And Christian, you may have seen him post before that he has no hobbies. And he's talking <laughs> about this on our private Zoom call. We're discussing like internal company stuff. And he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, the second I start doing something, I just think, man, I should really just be filming another video right now. Like that's, <laughs> that is his mindset. He's sick in the head. This is like proof of it too, in my opinion. <laughs> This yep. is proof that Christian has no hobbies. He's sick in the head and all he can do is create sick training content for you guys on demand. Like this is, it's insane. It, it really is to have <laughs> access to something like this. Eight different videos on Facebook ads, eight different. And there's probably like eight to 10 hours of content just right here on Facebook ads. Insane. Yep. yep. The sales training, I'm, I think, is very underrated, right? Like there's an overcoming objections video, which I'm big on. Um, there's just real nitty gritty sales training. Say this. When they say this, you say this, right? There's all of that built into it. So very, very helpful. You know, no matter how good a lead is, if you don't have any sales ability, you can, you, can, you can lose it sometimes. Um, systems, things we use internally. Um, how 
to build different websites. You know, before we actually built out our team a little bit more and we realized I was doing too much, I built all of our websites internally. So it kind of goes into how to build some simple websites if you don't want to spend a bunch of money to have one made for you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's automation look at, look at training. Systems and processes of a seven-figure agency. I mean, just absolute gold. An hour of hour just going seven. through <laughs> systems and processes of a seven-figure agency. It's insane. It's huge yeah. value. Huge there's a lot value. in here, guys. There's a ton. There's automation. A I mean, I don't think we yeah. need to go through every single video, right. but I know I, I wanted to share the share, like the actual university right here on, on the webinar or the, the live stream with you guys, because again, a lot of people are like, well, what's really included, right? You know, what, what do I actually get with it? Well, this is what you actually get. Like, well, I'm yep. going to show you exactly what you're getting is you're getting all of this content, you can access it at any time. You can watch it once. You can skip a video. You can watch a video a hundred times. You get access to the live training once a week. You get access to all 50 videos that I created, 51 videos going through the first 10 chapters of how to qualify, present, and sell, final expense, and Medicare supplements to seniors. You get all of this information for one payment. One payment, no obligations. You don't need to move your contracts. There's there's nothing that has to be done be beyond the one payment of $695.95. So less than $700, you get all of this. It's mm -hmm. it's insane, huge value. Yep, um, and we're updating it all the time, guys. Updating it constantly, making sure that it's fresh. Um, anything that's not up to date, we take it out and re re recreate it. Um, and yeah, yeah, guys, I mean, you know, this is this is essentially A to Z, how we've built the agency internally. Um, and I feel like it's, it's we, the, again, the reason why we're doing this, you guys, is because we want to be able to provide a solution as economically viable for you as possible in these trying, difficult times, in this time of 100%. uncertainty. We want to make sure that you have something you can turn to that, you know, is going to help you kind of learn solutions in how to keep continuing forward and growing your business and growing your agency. And that's ultimately why we're doing this. This is, I mean, this is below the lowest price point that we could actually do, you know, internally and have it make sense. It doesn't make sense. This makes no sense. It doesn't this make crazy. sense. It this doesn't makes no, make This sense. makes zero sense. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, like a, especially... it's like a two hundred thousand dollar. It's like two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth of content that you're getting for seven hundred bucks for a one time payment, no further obligations. Like one it true make up, sense. one true. Yeah, up. one one true up will 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 essentially pay off. So if you feel like you take this training and you go through it and you implement even a few things that you learn, if you feel like this will help you write one more true up a year you've paid for the course, right? What else do we need to say other than that? Is that a prime? This oh, sponsored by Logan Paul. <laughs> Logan Paul. And prime. My, my kid's gotten me into it, dude. I actually really like it. My wife, my wife just ruthlessly goes after me when I'm drinking it. She's like, you're drinking that you're supporting. Okay. Him. What's, what's your, what's your flavor though? Cause there's only one. This isn't the flavor. What's your flavor? I, I'm really into this. You better like, wild, say the wild right one. I'm, I'm real into the wild cherry one lately. Oh, I like that one no. a lot. <laughs> Icy pop. Icy pop. It's like your childhood in a drink, dude. Icy pop. I don't pop. really like it that much. Oh, my gosh. The thing is, every time I drink it, I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack shortly thereafter. Oh, this is the non. This is actually the non cap For once, I'm not drinking something oh, with caffeine right now. Good. This is, this is the non-caffeinated Caffeine ones are good too. And my, my wife won't buy them at the store, so I have to get them myself. She like refuses when <laughs> she goes shopping. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, how guys. Goes. Anything, let's circle back to the final rule though. Anything yes. else, you know, so again, we wanted to give you the goal of today's video. We wanted to give you guys an update on the final rule, which I felt like we, we did a pretty good job already. Maybe there's a little bit more we want to talk about. 
we also wanted to talk about the solution to this ongoing issue where you're either not getting support from your FMO, you know, maybe you want something that's outside your FMO, like Christian talked about. Maybe you want to be a little less reliant on your FMO. Yep. Maybe you're worried that the FMO model will get killed in the next year or two, which isn't crazy based on what we're already seeing from CMS. Yep. You know, maybe you just want to level up and you're happy with your FMO, you're getting support from your FMO, but you just want better training, access to better training. You want to be on those weekly, you know, I think super valuable weekly webinars. This is a great way to do it. This is a solution to a lot of the problems that we're seeing and we're trying to help support everybody, even agents that don't contract with us. That's what yep. we're trying to do. We're trying to support everybody with this. So all that being said, to get back to the final rule update, is there anything you feel like we didn't discuss or that you think warrants further discussion? I mean, there's little things, right, that people will bring up. Might not sound little, but like the the one-to-one -one consent on the lead stuff. My opinion, I think, was the same as yours on that. And it really just mirrored what the FCC has already put out as almost like, yeah, you know, it's all you know, you know, like when someone when someone makes like a great point intellectually in a conversation, like they're at dinner, let's say with somebody. And then there's the guy next to him that goes like, yeah, yeah, that's what CMS yeah. just did. You know, they wanted to feel included. So they wanted yeah, to go, yeah, funny. when the FCC already put this out months ago. Um, so it's, it's almost the same rule. Um, again, you know, it, it's, it's, it was needed to be followed regardless. So I don't think there's any new information there. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, there's, there's talks. I, I think, I think the biggest thing we want to pay attention to in the coming weeks is clarification from CMS on some things that are really gray areas. And I think that's what marketing money is going to look like. I don't think marketing money is gone. I think marketing money will just be changed significantly in terms of how it's paid. It's probably going to be capped quite a bit. Um, so I think End that's of, an important one. Here's, here's my prediction with marketing money because I've already heard this idea floated around. It's going to be paid on the back end of AEP. You know, normally the big marketing dollars are being shelled out pre AEP. I think it's going to move into a post bonus payment because they're big. Allegedly the big reason for the rule changes is, is steering. So if, mm -hmm. if they, if that payment happens up front, it can look like steering for sure, right? It's like, I need 100 apps to this carrier. Mm -hmm. If you pay it as a bonus on the back end, in my opinion, that eliminates the steering conversation. And I've heard some people say that they believe that's the future and I do too. I think that's what marketing... So it, it won't be called marketing dollars. I think it'll be like an app bonus paid on the back end of AAP. That's what I'm anticipating. Yeah, and I think I think like it's going to be probably regulated to where it's capped, right? Like it's the same amount from every carrier, and, and and then that satisfies the additional compensation probably rules and and things like that. Um, but ultimately, right? Like I think there's a lot of things in this document. Obviously, it's fourteen hundred page document, um, but I think those were my biggest takeaways at least. And, and again, there are still some unanswered questions, but I think the overall panic of it is, and, and I want to give a shout out to, by the way, right? Like this might come as a shock to, to, to some of you, but shout out to Nabip and, and everybody that um, worked Nibib. on this thing. Cause I think it could have looked a lot uglier than it did. Right? Like I heard somebody also say too, that if when the proposal first came out and they and the and the and the work towards trying to get some, you know, um, more favorable rules to come out started happening from all the powers that be in the BIP, Amerilife, Integrity, Senior Market Sales, all the carriers, if everybody knew that this is what they were gonna get, I think I've heard a couple people now say when the powers that be that they'd be pretty happy with that. They'd be pretty satisfied. They feel like that's pretty fair overall. Um, so shout out to Nabip um, and all the work that they did and everybody over there. I want to give them, you know, a, a great, um, you know, level of endorsement and um, just yeah, overall I, great absolutely. gratitude for me. Right. Because um, mostly they, volunteers. They were driving a lot of 
um, interactions. I saw that before anything else. I saw Nabip trying to facilitate agent engagement. The problem is, is I don't think we were a very engaging community. <laughs> if yeah. I had to place blame on anybody, it's all of us because there wasn't enough people upset or that even understood what was going on. That's probably the number one thing I would point out. I think Nabip did as much as they probably could do to yep. try to help make make change, to try to help eliminate some of the bloating that's coming with, with final rule. So um, that being said, I know we're coming up on the end of the hour and we've got a hard stop here, but I want to see if we can get to some of these questions and comments because there's been a lot of them and we haven't been able to get to everybody. But one of them I wanted to mention um, from Carlos, I'm starting out independently this year from working with UHC. Uh, are the commissions changing that much from years prior? Um, this seems like a confused agent question to me because it's not that commissions are changing. It's the additional payments mm -hmm. beyond commissions. That's what we've been talking about that are changing. Uh, if anything, I guess, based on inflation, depending on where you're living and where you're writing applications, your commission dollars have probably gone up. There's also a chance that this $100 administrative payment, depending on the type of business you're writing, that might also be an increase to your pay as an agent. So overall, I think the independent agent, and some people might disagree, but I think the independent agent is going to overall net more, most likely, than what they've been making. So... You are solid. You're good to go, Carlos. Um, let me see what else we've got here. Do, do, do. I agree, Dennis. Maybe increasing the barrier for entry will help get better agents. Maybe so. Um, yeah. I think. I think it really just it really just depends. We won't really know. But what's the clawback? I don't know what, I guess the clawback officially right now is probably marketing dollars, right? Yeah. If, yep. if there was one thing where I had to say like they really did claw back from everybody, it's marketing dollars. But again, I, it's not that I even think it's going to be gone. I think it's going to turn into a, a post AP bonus instead of a pre AP marketing dollars. So similar, similar thing, just structured differently. Yeah, I would, I would say marketing money. Um, and ultimately, right, like a lot of marketing money goes to FMOs as kind of revenue, not for all of them, but like for a lot of them, right? Like it's right. kind of revenue for them. So if it's limited, let's say, let's say it's capped and limited, that takes a big portion of their override or their, their revenue away as well. So maybe they're not able to do quite as much, you know, that I think that's right. perfectly reasonable to expect. They can probably still do a lot for you, still necessary. You still need, you know, they're important. But anything that hurts their pockets ultimately bleeds down to everybody um, in some way, right? So I think that's a reasonable one. HRAs, of course, right? But of course, they're just building that into the extra commission. And right. I've, I've, heard it, I've heard it speculated that you'll probably have the HRAs um, built into the app as like a non-optional thing. Like it's like you need it just like you need the Medicare number to submit the right. app. So that makes a lot of sense to me if we see something like that. Cool. I think that's all the questions I really saw. So any final thoughts, Mr. Brindle, before we cut the live stream? Whew. I mean, it's been a whirlwind of a week. I'll tell you guys that. Um, had countless conversations about this. I was talking about it so much that I thought Glenn was going to fly out here and, and bury me in the ground. He was, I think he was getting, it was so getting annoyed. Close. He was getting so it was annoyed getting about close. it. I was like, if I hear it, I, it, that man, that first couple of days was brutal. It was just like, call, 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 call. It's just like everything was final rule this, final rule that. I was just dying. I was like, please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. You're a Medicare FMO now, sir. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a lead vendor. I'm just a lead vendor. I promise. Stop. <laughs> um, but but ultimately, right, my, my final thoughts would be a lot of optimism for this final rule, but at the same time, invest in yourself and be prepared for anything. And I think that's kind of what we're giving you guys the opportunity to do. And, you know, we want to help you. 
ultimately at the end of the day, we want to help you in every way possible. Like I love this business. I love our industry. Um, I've never been quite as good at anything in my life as I am in this industry. Ask my wife. My wife's like, you are like a child. You can't take care of yourself. Like something breaks in the house and I'm like, can you go fix it? And she's like, you want me to, I'm like, yeah, I don't know how to do it. Like, I don't know how to put this together. I don't know. How to use I only hammer. know Medicare. That's it. I, yeah. Like I'm good at this one thing. So I'd be pretty like, you know, I'd be that guy walking into the wall, looking for the door in the room. Should get out of the room without Medicare. That'd be me. I'd be pretty helpless. So, um, you know, I want to, this industry has given me so much. I love our business. I love our industry. And I, I want to give back and help as many of you be successful as possible. So I hope, um, I hope to see a lot of you guys over there on the, on the training and, um, yeah, working together on, you know, helping us all grow rising tide lifts all ships. I love that guys. Uh, any questions about anything that we discussed today or, you know, questions about the university promotion that we have going on 85% off $700 lifetime access. The link is in the comments below this video. Please, please, please feel free to tag us. Drop your question or comment below this video. Hashtag team replay. If you're watching the replay and you didn't get to catch this one live, um, that promotion is going until the end of the month. So we've got about two and a half weeks for you to take advantage of the lifetime access one time $700 promotion for the university. So you go to sevenfigureu.com and you'll see a timer at the top. It's counting you down until that promo goes away and this becomes yep. a subscription model. So 85%, we just saw, yes, there, there, that's the reaction we just got from someone commenting yes. on the video. 85%, yes, 85% off its normal retail price till the end of this month. So take advantage of that promotion while you can. Guys, I can't wait to keep adding content to the university. And you know, just like the content we provide here free in the group, it's just that much better when we are able to share it to you guys in the university and on that webinar that we do every single week. So um, until next time, you guys, happy selling and sell insurance in large volumes, as we always say. Later, guys.